Hi Year 5 and 6, hope you're all well. So over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be giving you your English tasks and giving you some support with the tasks that I've set. So you should have received all this information on an email with an attachment. Please let your teachers know if you can't open that attachment because you'll need those resources in order to do the tasks. Okay, so just email your class teacher and we'll get that sent out on an email to you. So in this video, I'm going to have a look at the tasks that you've been set for this week and we'll have a look at some of the resources that you've been sent as well. Over the next few weeks, I would like you to write your own set of instructions. So I'm hoping this is a text type that you're all familiar with. I didn't want to do anything um, completely new because we're working in different situations. Um, so hopefully it's something that you have some familiar familiarity, familiar familiarity, 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 is that right? Yeah. With already. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I know that you're all going to have been doing loads of different tasks at home and I've been sent some amazing pictures of um, cakes that you've been baking, wish jars that you've made, paintings that you've done. Uh, I'm sure there's so many things that you've been doing. So what I thought would be really lovely would be if you could write sets of instructions instructing other people how to do those things and then everyone else in their homes can have a go at doing the same tasks that you've been doing. Okay, so on your emails you will have been sent a you have a grid that breaks down what you should be doing every day. So the structure of our learning is really similar to how we do our English learning at school. So we're starting off having a think about the text type, what we already know, what needs to be included in that text type. You'll have a look at a model text. So really familiarise yourself, got the word right that time, familiarise yourself with the text type um, and, um, and then you'll make sure that you understand it really well by answering some questions, thinking about retrieving information from that text. Um, and then towards the end of the week, we're looking at picking out words and phrases from the text and then writing your own. So by the end of the week, you should have written examples of expanded noun phrases, adverbial phrases, um, and different clause types that could be used within a set of instructions. Okay, so that is the plan for this week. So next week you will get on to writing your own instructions, but this week is all about being really familiar with the text and um, the, sh the features within them. Okay, so your first task is to just, I just want you to write down anything that you know about instructions. So absolutely anything at all. It might be the kind of words that there are in instructions, the structure, why people write instructions, what their purpose is and I just want you to spend a couple of minutes writing down all of your ideas okay and then we'll have a look at some ideas together and you can see if you got those things and tick those off on your list or you can add some of the things that I thought of that you maybe didn't think of. Okay, so first of all, just have a think, what do you know?
Okay, so the purpose of instructions, quite simply, is to instruct. So you are telling someone how to do something that they don't know how to do. So in order to do that, you want to be using lots of um, very specific language. So that's why we're using things like expanded noun phrases, because they give specific detail about the kind of materials that people need to use. That's why we're using loads of adverbial phrases because that helps you to order the information and tell them exactly how to do things and in which order um, and um, why we're using lots of different verb types so that we can tell them how to do those things. Um, so we're going to be using adverbs, things like carefully, quickly, slowly, modal verbs, you should do this, you could do this, you might do this. Um, imperative verbs, so they're things like cut, chop, so, um, so using lots and lots of specific language types within uh, language choices within our instructions. Um, in terms of our structure, we're going to start off with an introduction that should really engage and make people want to follow those instructions, make it seem like, yeah, that's, oh, I really want to make that, I really want to do that. So we want a nice engaging introduction, followed by our list of equipment. And then the biggest part is going to be the section which tells people what it is they need to do. So I like to use numbered steps for that starting with one and going on but you could use bullet points um, but ideally you want that list of things broken down because that's going to make it really easy for the reader to understand that information and to follow those steps okay so um what we'll do is i will read you the model text so you will have this model text so what would be ideal would be if you could be reading the model text along with me reading it, like how you would do in class. OK, but if you just want to listen to me reading it, that's absolutely fine. OK. For my set of instructions, I thought about something that I've done over the last couple of weeks um, that I would like to instruct you how to do. So I use the idea from my Easter Positivity project on making a maths game and I've written a set of instructions for that. Okay, so how to make an educational and fun maths game. Are you missing your maths learning? Are you worried that all your maths knowledge is starting to fall out of your brain? Well, worry no more because using simple materials, which can be found around your home, you can make your very own easy to play maths game. This maths game is similar to snakes and ladders, but includes a range of maths questions that need to be answered in order to win. In no time at all, you will be challenging your family and your brain will be set into motion, thinking about all the maths facts you've learned over the last few years. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. What you need. A large old roll of wrapping paper that has one white side. A long straight ruler or a straight object that could be used like a ruler. A variety of coloured felt tip pens or pencil crayons. Plain paper, a pair of sharp scissors, some PVA glue or Pritt stick, a flat surface, preferably somewhere quiet where you won't be disturbed. A dice for playing the game. What you need to do. To start with, collect all of your, the material, which are mentioned above, that you need in order to create your maths game. You may need to ask an adult to help you with this, as items may be in special hiding places. Remember to ask adults nicely and preferably when they are not in the middle of doing something else. Once you have everything you need, clear a flat surface. A table is ideal, but you could also use a flat wooden floor and roll out the wrapping paper. If you want to make quite a large board game, you need to roll about 80 centimetres of paper. However, you could make a smaller game if you have less paper. After that, pick up your ruler and a dark felt tip pen. Carefully and accurately draw a square onto the paper. Your square should be 50 centimetres in width and 50 centimetres in length. This means that you can create a hundred square 
grid inside. Four, now that the square is drawn, divide it into 100 smaller squares. To do this, draw nine vertical lines and nine horizontal lines. Make sure you use a ruler to measure the intervals between these lines so that the squares end up the same size. Because you want your square to be the same squares to be the same size, try to be as accurate as you can when using your ruler. Five, write numbers one to 100 in the squares. Six, once your board is ready, you are going to make rainbows and rain clouds, which are instead of snakes and ladders, to go onto your board. Colour these on plain paper and after that, slowly and neatly cut them out. Decide where you want these to go on your board and carefully glue them into place. Well done, you have now created the main board for playing your maths game. Seven, you now need to create some maths question cards, which will be used to challenge your family. To create these, think about some of the maths learning you have done at school. For example, using the four operations, converting measures, recalling square numbers. There are so many options for the questions you could ask. Pick up a coloured felt tip and write the questions neatly on pieces of paper or card. Eight, you have nearly finished making your game. Next, you need to make or find counters which the players will move around the board. These could be made out of small bits of cardboard, or you might want to find something sm some small things, such as old decorations, from around your home. 9. Add whatever decoration you want to your board game. A title for the game at the top would be a good idea, so think of a good name for it and write it in your best handwriting. 10. Find something to play with and get ready to play. In order to play, turn over a maths question and answer it. If you get it right, roll the dice and move along the board. When you land on a rainbow, you move further along and closer to the finishing point. But if you land on a rain cloud, you have to go back. Enjoy! Other tips. If you want, you could add a touch of positivity to your game. Write positive messages onto your rainbows so that as you are playing, you are not only revising your maths facts, but thinking positive thoughts too. Okay, so... I'd like you to also read that over to yourself several times. So read it to yourself in your head, um, read it out loud, thinking about your fluency, really familiarise yourself with the model text because that is going to help you a lot when it comes to writing your own. Okay, um, so for the rest of the week, you've got some questions that I'd like you to answer on um, day two and then on day three you are looking for um, some language features within that text so I've given you five language features I would like you to look for so you've got expanded noun phrases adverbial phrases imperative verbs relative clauses and subordinate clauses okay and then the last two days you are going to be writing those kind of features for a text okay so what i'm going to do is um do another little video for wednesday just giving you some examples of those language features um and helping you to find them within the text and maybe giving you a bit of an extension if you want to find other word types as well okay so i hope you have a good start to your week missing you lots um, but you're making us very proud. Keep emailing in if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, and I will speak to you soon.